Towards the end of the 1990s, there was a marked improvement in the catching efficiency of the demersal trawler fleet. An unfortunate drawback of this was that bottom trawls began to catch more juvenile cod as well. All early attempts to reduce the catch of small cod by using selective gears gave poor or varying results. So in 1995, the EU Commission decided to ask ICES for advice. At that time, the ICES did not find the scientific evidence supporting the use of selective gears clear enough, so it emphasized the need of more research instead. In 1997, an international research project was launched in the Baltic Sea by a team of Finnish, Danish and Swedish scientists. The Bacoma project succeeded in achieving most of its objectives, for example to ensure that cod escaping from trolls survive. Furthermore, the project took a major step from vessel to fleet selectivity and managed to reveal a between vessel variation far beyond all expectations. The conclusion became that the best way to improve trawl size selectivity was to use cod ends with fixed mesh openings or cod ends with escape panels. Actually, this result was neither revolutionary or new. On the contrary, it was more or less what scientists had discovered ever since the 1960s. This time, the new thing was that the Bacoma project had managed to substantially improve our knowledge of the catching and escape process of Baltic cod. Now we knew how cod was escaping. Despite the success the Bacoma project managed to achieve in the technological field, it however failed in two very important tasks. Firstly, it failed in convening internationally the interest of all major stakeholders. The insufficient international commitment to the outcome of the Bacoma project created political problems in Brussels. Adoption of the Bacoma cod end was based on the compromises that partly undermined the effect of the management action, for example by having the Commission to withdraw one of its goals, the one net rule. Secondly, despite a major involvement of the fishing industry in the project, it still failed to become practical enough. A good example of this is the onboard maintenance problems that the specific knotless netting material the Ultra Cross had caused. After the implementation of the Bacoma window, there was at first a marked reduction in discarding rates. But since 2006 and 2007, more and more information regarding discarding is coming from worried fishermen. Due to an improved situation in the eastern Baltic cod stock, and especially due to a couple of good recruiting year classes, the selection capacity of the Bacoma window has become too low. Fishermen tell that the 3.6 meter long window is too small to handle today's catch levels. According to the fishermen, the Bacoma window loses its selectivity as the catch volume exceeds about 2 to 2.5 tons. Just like in 1995, the EU Commission in the beginning of 2009 decided to again address the arising discard problem by sending the ICES a request for advice. Can the ICES give a scientific advice this time? Apparently not, at least not based on existing data, because selectivity data covering today's catch volumes does not exist. But perhaps an even more justified question would be The truth is that we already have the theoretical knowledge on how to make selective cadence. Thanks to hundreds of hours of underwater observations, the Bacoma project managed to document in detail the entire escape process. We know that the meshes are wide open in the front part of the trawl, but cod does not show any attempts to escape upward here. As we move further back, the meshes are gradually closing, and in the extension piece they become completely closed. Not until we reach the very end of the gear, the so-called cod end, 
we find the meshes open again, but this time we find meshes with varying opening ratios. In the front of the catch bulb we can see fish tumbling around in turbulent waters. Cod was not found a very anxious escapee, it seemed more as if the fish were guided through the netting by the constant outflow of water. Escapement was observed only in this narrow section. Logically, as the catch increases, this selective area moves forward as well. The particularly passive escape behavior of cod became very conspicuous when observing cod ends with longer escape panels. Cod were seldom seen attempting to escape in the front part of these more than twice as long as the present Pacoma panel. This particular behavior of cod seemed also to explain the differences found in the selectivity properties between Danish and Swedish side window cod ends. Both designs had two long escape panels on both sides of the cod end. However, in the Danish model the panels did not extend into the lifting bag hence resulting in poorer selectivity, especially with small catches. The Bacoma project tested the T90 design as well. Here we can see the design filled aboard the German research vessel the Solea in 1998. However, after two sea trials this codent was rejected by the industry. Based on experience, the 90 degree turned netting was not considered to guarantee selectivity in full scale operation as the material got older. The advantage of using a top window design is that any existing cod end can easily be modified simply by cutting a hole where the escape panel is mounted. Moreover, back in the 1990s, the top window was the only method that fishermen, based on their experience, knew for sure could give the desired selectivity and be practical at the same time. However, during the past 20 years, many trawl skippers have had the chance to use a wider range of selective cod ends. Based on today's experience, many trawl skippers do not necessarily see the top window design as the best solution anymore. Especially not if the top window needs to be made longer because of increasing catches. The fishermen fear that with longer panels they might run into severe practical problems with the Bacoma cod end as they expect its sensibility to twist to increase. Some tendency for twisting was actually observed already during the Bacoma project years in 1997 to 99. Without the help from the fishermen, the Bacoma project had definitely not been able to conduct, for example, the survival experiments, both in full scale and under fully authentic fishing conditions. Now that the existing theoretical knowledge on how to build selective cadence needs to be transferred into practice by designing gears that have a higher selection capacity without becoming unpractical, we need the extensive knowledge of fishermen and net makers. In developing selective fishing gears, we need the industry to take the leading role. Furthermore, if we can do this through an international cooperation, where fishermen from both western and eastern fleets are seeking technical solutions together, the odds of having a great success are definitely even higher.